Hello, Southside family. This is Pastor Dwayne, and welcome to another week of celebrating good news. Uh, good news is a great program that we started through the shutdown so that we can hear from special guests, even sometimes our own members. Uh, tonight we have a special guest, and if you have not seen his face, you have heard his voice, most likely. Uh, if you've ever heard Larry the Cucumber, uh, he's also known as Larry Boy. Uh, this is Mike Naraki. Mike and Phil Vischer created VeggieTales and become, has just exploded in the Christian market and actually in the mainstream market too. Uh, but they started out with half hour episodes. They have gone into major motion pictures. You may have seen Jonah, a VeggieTales movie, and the Pirates Who Don't Do Anything, and also their merchandising, their t-shirts, everything. But it all started from two guys who cared enough, uh, who wanted to instill the word into young people. And they wanted to do it in a way that kids would enjoy. And, and along the way, they picked up adult fans too, because when you watch the episodes, you can see how creative it is, how funny it is. Uh, the songs get into your brain. Uh, some of you heard me last Sunday sing some of my uh, his cheeseburger, which is one of my favorite songs. Uh, everyone seems to have a favorite VeggieTales silly song, and uh, that one's mine. And you may hear a few more as you listen to this conversation. But we're so thrilled to have Mike tonight. Uh, Mike is not only doing VeggieTales, but he's doing some other things that keep uh, kids engaged in the Bible. He's writing books. He's doing a podcast to talk to parents. So all these things, because you can tell it's on his heart to minister to kids and to put the word in their heart. I'm so glad that my kids uh, enjoy VeggieTales. We've listened to them on cross country trips. Uh, they know the songs and we're picking up some of the moral lessons in there and we're picking up some of the word in there. So you'll hear a little bit more from Mike. If you never heard from him, uh, you're going to really enjoy him. And I'm so thrilled. Thank you, Mike, for a great conversation. And thank you for all you do through the years for kids all around the world to impact them with the gospel. Thank you for your faithfulness. I think you're really going to enjoy this conversation and I appreciate you joining us. God bless you. And here we go. Uh, since we're talking about dates here, uh, how long ago was it that the first VeggieTales started? I think, I'll tell you my first introduction is I was working yeah. in a youth camp and okay. I used to get product from the record companies. They would send me okay. stacks of CDs to give to the kids. Yeah. And one year they were like, Let's, I want to send you these silly songs from VeggieTales. Yeah, and we passed them out to a bunch of the kids at camp, and even today, you know, I mean, these kids have kids. That yeah. was their first introduction to VeggieTales. They, wow. they think if they come to me when they think of VeggieTales, they're like, "Oh, Dwayne, yeah. you know, you're the first one." <laughs> one. Yeah, yeah. Well, oh, that had to been the early two thousands, right, or maybe even late. Oh 90s. yeah, so it was it was early nine. Well, early nineties is when we started. So our very first episode, "Where's God When I'm Scared," was Christmas of nineteen ninety three, wow. um, and and I remember, you know, it was so funny because we had music in every show. You know, first, second, third, fourth show. We were being distributed by Everland Entertainment, which was a children's division of Word Records at the time. And the executives there came to us and said, "Hey, you know, this this music that you have in the show is kind of fun." you know, could you kind of gather it together and we can put it on a CD, you know, and send it out. And we're like, okay, yeah, sure. So we did that never really expecting and the music just, you know, CDs like that just really exploded. Oh, yeah. So it was, it really was a surprise for us, but um, a pleasant surprise. But uh, yeah, 1993 Christmas, where's God and I'm scared. And Phil and I met at Bible college in Minneapolis um, outside of Minneapolis in the mid eighties uh, where we did a puppet ministry together. And um, you know, that kind of, you know, we became good friends and we're writing and performing. And, you know, that led to, you know, me moving out to Chicago where he was living to, you know, I came out here to go or I came up there to go to school to do, finish my undergrad. Uh, and then that's when we, you know, were working in video post and came up with the idea for the show. So, you know, so sort of that mid 80s through early 90s is the wow. genesis. And then 93, end of 93 is when it all got started. And it's still going strong. I mean, uh, I watched the Shakespeare play uh -huh. uh, and uh, thought it was great. It still has 
it's just classic veggie tales. It just, you know, because of the technology, it keeps looking better, you yes. know? Yeah. And, uh, right. But it's still got the same heart. It's same voices, same wit. Uh, yeah. So that's, that's quite a testament really to the, t to all of your talents and the creative talents there behind it too. Oh, well, thank you, Dwayne. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's been really exciting to, uh, you know, to have, have the characters back. It's been a, a number of years since I've, you know, uh, done my Larry, Larry voice. And it, it's, it's been a character that's been, you know, such a big part of my life, you know, for so long. And I was, I was just thrilled to be able to do uh, this new series. And, you know, the, the, the Yippee series is sort of like the, the idea of it is, is sort of very Muppet show like, you know, it's Bob right. and Larry are in charge of this theater and putting on a show, um, you know, for a live audience. And, you know, so it's about, it's about the show. It's the shows they put on themselves, but it's also kind of the backstage antics and all of that. So it's very, very Muppet show like, which I was, you know, a huge fan of and as was Phil back yeah, in the day. So, yeah, so it's a, it's, it, it's just a great, I, I love the, you know, for me, it's like it, VeggieTales always lent itself so well, you know, as this kind of this um, ensemble of characters who got together and put on plays. And so the sky is just sort of the limit um, in terms of the number of stories you can tell. And, you know, the characters assume different roles. And so it's just I think this the way that it's structured um, just lends itself to um, a lot of different types of fun storytelling. How uh, how does it feel really to be a part of something that has meant so much to now different generations of people i mean yeah. that's what's wild about it when most people get one shot at one yeah. generation you know yeah. and yeah. and that's like uh this is what my parents used to watch but this is what the parents used to watch this is you know some of them some of them may be uh, verging on being grandparents by this point just by nature of you know yeah not that they watch it when they're kids you know but uh so it's affecting so many generations. How does that feel? Oh my goodness. It's, it's so humbling, uh, you know, to see what God has done with veggie tales over all, all these years. I mean, you know, in, in so many ways, it's been a, a, a roller coaster ride uh, for, for all of us that have been involved in the show. You know, we've had our, you know, our, our, you know, started off, you know, uh, we felt like we had, you know, the opportunity to help tell stories that would, uh, help parents pass on biblical values to their kids. We thought that was a really important thing to do. Um, there was a need for that, you know, with you know, just to be entertaining and engaging, uh, but to have characters who assume that there's a God who loves us, who made us, who has a purpose for our lives. Um, and so, you know, so I think at the heart of it, you know, that's, that's really what we want to pass on and what's so valuable about the messages of Veggie Tales. Um, but then, you know, but beyond that, just having, you know, having fun. And, uh, you know, I, I'm, I teach at the college level now, and a lot of the students that I teach grew up on Veggie Tales. And you know, I'm, I'm, you know, film and animation is what I teach, and you know, so many of them were, you know, part part of how why they were inspired to go into storytelling was in, in filmmaking was because of Veggie Tales, which is just really uh, humbling to see how God can use, you know, what you do to influence other people, and you know, kind of how. Uh, he can give you a gift and and you know use that for his glory and so I've just have been um, just just amazed to to be part of it all. As a teacher, how many how many how often do you have to break out your layer boy voice? I mean, do you? <laughs> you, know, you, know, um, you know, it's so funny because. Um, I don't, you know, I kind of, I, I have, I have a fear of being corny. You know, I, I, I've, I've the, 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 the corny dad phobia, you know, because, <laughs> yeah, yeah. because I'm fairly new to teaching. I've only been doing it for a couple of years at the university level. It's like, okay, I, I really, I want these kids to think I'm cool. So if I break out the Larry voice too much, are they going to think I'm trying too hard? Right, but I yeah. did get, <laughs> but I did get a, um, uh, we do course evaluations at the end of every, uh, the students fill out evaluations at the end of every semester. And last semester, I was looking through the evaluations, and uh, it's it's all uh, anonymous, of course. But one of the one of the students uh, put does not do Larry voice enough, <laughs> so, <laughs> so I have to take that to heart. Maybe maybe pepper in a little bit more in future classes. Do you have to do it like if if you're out with friends? I can imagine you're out with friends, or you're out with your kids, or something, and somebody yeah. in the group says 
this is Larry boy. No, I don't believe it. You know, do you have to do that? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. I do that all the time. I break it out. So, but you know, I just have to measure it. You know, I don't want to be that guy, you know, who does the voice all the time. It's like, okay, be quiet. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, but yeah, but it's always fun. And I, I love, especially, you know, when I've known somebody for a while who who's known I'm the voice, uh, but I've never like done it live for them. It's just fun to see that reaction because, wow, this, you know, cause I'm like six, five, you know, I'm a big guy and, uh, you know, that squeaky voice coming out of me just sort of freaks some people out. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> yeah, I love it. Yeah. Uh, I, uh, on Sunday when I was uh, promoting this to, you know, the church, you know, that we were going to have you as a guest, I, uh, I, years ago, like you're talking about those songs, Word put, uh, or somebody put the cheeseburger song on, on WOW CD. And yeah, I didn't yeah. really listen to it that much, except I listen to that WOW CD all the time. So yeah. I got to hearing that cheeseburger song so much that I would imitate it. And then, and <laughs> then all for my friends and my friends' kids and stuff, it was like, that was my little, uh, uh, what you call it, my little comedy routine there for a while. <laughs> nice. Everybody would say, Dwayne's going to, Dwayne do the cheeseburger song. So I did a little <laughs> bit of that Sunday morning, you know. That's uh, awesome. That's I haven't awesome. listened to it enough. I'm, I know I'm not as good as I used to be. But, <laughs> oh, I'm sure. It's like riding a bicycle, right? <laughs> yeah, I used to. Uh, it was, you know, he said to her, I'd like a cheeseburger. <laughs> oh, look at that. woo -hoo! <laughs> <laughs> that's a great mr lunt that's an awesome yeah. mr lunt <laughs> oh yeah yeah and there are just so many great songs i mean but that that one was the one i was most familiar with just because of the the wow yeah. the wow a, yeah, yeah. I, I i remember that and then you know i think that you know the veggie the actual veggie tales version was on that and then i believe it was michael tate did a cheeseburger cover you know for another <laughs> you know a, a later wow <laughs> i gotta find <laughs> you know? that Oh, it's really great. It's really great. Yeah, there was a number of Christian artists who did VeggieTales covers and we put those, all those together on one album. Um, and uh, it's really fun. Do you have a favorite song? <laughs> oh, man. You know, I, I think Cheeseburger is probably up there. I like the Pirates, Hairbrush. There's been a couple of more obscure ones. Um, uh, Gated Community is another fun oh, yeah. one <laughs> So that I, that I like um uh you know yodeling veterinarian of the alps yeah there's just you know that it's 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 fun I, every once in a while now that i have apple music you know like you know and i can kind of dial through and listen to stuff i'll, I'll come up on stuff it's like oh wow i forgot about this one this is this is this is fun so um yeah it's that there it, it's it's hard it's hard to nail down a, a specific favorite well what's so i think what's so good about it is there's every, there's a lot of creativity that goes into it and like I said, a lot of wit and they're, they're catchy. It's not like, uh, it's not like we, oh, we just got to do, you know, put a song together. How are we going to do it? But there's, there's a lot that goes into it, you know? Oh, oh, ab absolutely. One of my biggest fears always has been the fear of stinking. <laughs> and so I, you know, as I'm writing, you know, I did this, this filter and fills the same way, you know, you have, you have this filter on and, you know, I write a line. I'm like, no, I don't like it. You know, no, and, and so it just becomes this process of right. like, you know, not being done until like, oh wow, this is great. I think this is really funny, and you know, and then and then you put it out there, and and um, and then obviously you you test it with other people and see, okay, well maybe this isn't working, and then you sort of massage it, and that that's been sort of the fun part about the process, especially with animation. It takes so long um, that usually once it has gone through the pipeline, um, you've had a chance to kind of you know, if it, it was a good idea to start with, it just gets better and better, uh, you know, uh, along the way, uh, as, as different people kind of, you know, kind of react to it or, or add their gifts, gifting to it. Um, you know, Kurt Heineke, who we've worked with uh, on music all these years, is just a brilliant musician. Um, you know, I don't, I don't play any instruments, you know, I just sort of, when I write a song, I, you know, have a melody in mind and a lyric, right. uh, but then I lean so heavily on Kurt to say, hey, Kurt, you know, make this into a real song. And so I'll, I'll sing it into a, you know, into a recorder and send it to Kurt and he'll send me back and then we'll work back and forth. And it's just, you know, his work inspires my work and vice versa. And um, it's just a, it's, it's been a, you know, a, a just a great team effort all these years with a number of different folks. Well, Mike, one of the things uh, that I appreciate about VeggieTales uh, is the fact that it is teaching kids the Bible. Uh, and, you know, and, and the word in a, 
you know, through creative outlets and stuff. And, and, and even you have started a podcast, uh, the Bible for kids. So it's yeah. something that's, it's, you know, it's on your heart because it's not just yeah. like, this is my day job. I'm going to, I'm going to do something else. So why is that, why is that so important for you? Why is that your heartbeat? Yeah, you know, I felt, um, I, you know, I felt called, uh, it goes all the way back to high school. You know, I, I went forward at a youth convention and dedicated my, my vocation to ministry uh, when I was a junior in high school. And at the time, I really didn't know what that would look like. I didn't necessarily feel called to become a pastor, you know. And so, you know, at that point in my life, I kind of took the influences around me of, okay, my, my mom's a nurse, my dad's an engineer, my older brother's a chemistry major. And, and so I went in the direction of, of being a, a medical missionary. That's what I wanted to do. And, you know, and I, and I had always loved kids ministry. So I thought, okay, maybe being a pediatrician is what, you know, God is calling me to do. And so I sort of followed that path, but then along the way, you know, God uh, put, you know, different you open different doors and, and, you know, kind of really led me in the, in the path of my gifting. And I just really feel like, you know, uh, ministering to kids and, and that, that idea that, um, uh, you know, kids, kids are shaped so much by the stories that they encounter, um, early in life. And, um, you know, if, if I can, if I can, you know, through part of my gifts, offer that to, to kids, you know, offer that worldview that there's a God who made us, who loves us, who wants a relationship with us. Um, you know, I see that, I see that as my ministry. Uh, and so, you know, with Veggie Tales, with, um, you know, Dead Sea Squirrels, which is a, you know, series that I've been writing with the Bible for kids, you know, just, you know, offering those resources for parents, um, you know, I think is, is, is part of the gifts that God has given me and really what I want to do with my life. What, tell me more about the podcast. What does the structure kind of look like or sound like? So we, we talk to anybody uh, who is involved with, um, with uh, biblical worldview, biblical messages, getting those out to kids. So a lot of times it's, it's authors uh, who have a new book out. Uh, and so we'll come on, we'll, we'll, we'll speak to that. Uh, we'll speak to, to the author, just hear their story about, you know, kind of their background, how they got started, why they got started. A little bit about their book. Um, you know what we've seen over the last few years is just you know a lot of Christian bookstores um, have you know gone on a business, and you know folks who were who were used to going into a bookstore to you know to kind of check out new titles, new products, uh, um, new resources. Um, you know that's not available anymore. And so Dan Lynch, who uh, who who manages myself and Amy Parker, Amy Parker's the co-host on 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 the podcast. Um, he was he was at Lifeway uh, for a number of years, um, and you know knew that that was a great place for parents to be to re, to be resourced. And so, when a lot of that started to go away, um, you know Dan and Amy and I talked about okay maybe we can kind of help that you know with a podcast to say okay if parents are looking for those kind of resources um, in sort of a way that's that's curated, uh, you know that's that's what we want to do. And so we'll talk to we'll talk to authors, we'll talk to musicians. Um, uh, we had a, ch a children's pastor on um, last last week, uh, so just you know, just just that resource for parents to say, okay, I'm, I'm you know looking for ideas, looking for resources for my kids. You know, um, this I, I love what this person had to say, so I'm going to go search, you know, look for their book or look for their music, uh, that kind of thing. And the Dead Sea Squirrels uh, series that you talked about, tell us a little bit more about that. Oh sure. So um, so I had this crazy idea a number of years ago. One of the one of the tricky things with Veggie Tales, we we drew a line in the sand very early on with Veggie Tales that um, uh, it was it, we we weren't going to show Jesus as a vegetable uh, just because we felt like that would be you know pushing it too far. The idea that okay these characters are an ensemble cast of characters and they're kind of putting on these silly little you know shows, um, but we really wanted to keep the sacred sacred. And so right, yeah. uh, we never did that. And so I had this idea uh, for, for an animated series years ago uh, for what, it, what would it be like for two characters from the time of Christ to come forward in time and share their experience with the modern generation. So that was the, that was the kind of the, the big concept. And so how that worked out with squirrels is this little boy, uh, Michael, he's 10 years old. He's in Israel. This is how the first book starts out. It's a whole series. Um, 
He's in Israel with his dad, who's an anthropologist. Uh, he's brought his buddy, Justin, along with him. And there are two 10-year-old kids about ready to start the fifth grade. And they're exploring a cave near the Dead Sea against his dad's wishes, because his dad told him never to go into a cave without an experienced guide. But um, he, they go in there, and they find two salt-encrusted, dehydrated uh, squirrels. Uh, <laughs> hidden in this cave. And Michael stashes them in his backpack and brings them back home with him to Tennessee and sets them up on his uh, bedroom dresser uh, in front of an open window. Uh, it rains that night, they rehydrate and they come back to life. And it's an old Jewish couple, Merle and Pearl Squirrel, uh, who, uh, who ventured into a cave and they have a whole backstory of how they got to that cave because squirrels aren't in, in the Dead Sea region. But um, uh, but they live during the time of Christ and the apostles. And so they have that knowledge uh, to share with Michael and his friends uh, for their kind of their elementary school problems and dilemmas that they face in life. And so so it's it's a comedy. It's fun. Uh, but each each book also contains uh, like Veggie Tales, a biblical value at the core and, and a lesson for kids. So that the first the first book is about honoring your father and mother. Um, right. The second the second book is about loving your enemies. Um, so uh, uh, and, and and treating others how you want to be treated. So um, that 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 type of thing. So, uh, but in it we get to talk about Jesus. We get to talk about okay, the Sermon on the Mount. This is you know. So we have a flashback to the time of Christ. Um, where you know kids are learning those biblical lessons uh, in the con in, in in sort of the context of a of a modern um, modern adventure. So you're doing you're doing the podcast, you're doing Dead Sea Squirrels, you're doing Veggie Tales, and uh -huh. you're teaching. So what yeah. are you doing in your free time now? <laughs> <laughs> Not a lot, man. No, actually, you know it's been. In some ways, you know, the whole thing with COVID has just been so difficult in so many ways for so many people. Um, but you know, it's been a you know we've we've tried to see the 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 blessing in it, uh, just with being at home, being with our kids, being with family, taking time to slow down a little bit. Um, and so, you know, a lot of what I can do, I've been able to do from my home office at work, and you know, I've saved a lot of time not having to commute back and forth, <laughs> which has been nice. Right. And, um, so my wife and I, you know, if I if I were to say we had one hobby, it's it's gardening. You know, ironically enough, being in Veggie Tales, <laughs> so we just love <laughs> we love not vegetable gardening, but more like you know, kind of landscape. You know, no, and no cucumbers. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, no, no cucumber. We're not we're not growing veggies. We're just you know making the backyard nice. <laughs> so, well, I think it's. I just want to say that uh, I think it's amazing that uh, the work you've done through the years and and just what's cool to me is just something a simple idea that you may have had you know with phil so many years ago that's just exploded you know that's that god gets in something and takes yeah. it yeah around the world i mean I, I know when you're out in public and you see a, a random larry the cucumber shirt or yeah. you know something like that you you gotta you know it's gotta feel surreal that that happened Oh, yeah, no, absolutely. And you're right. I mean, I've been in South America or Africa and have seen that. And, and just to know that it's gone around the world has been, um, you know, in, incredible. And, 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 and to just realize that, you know, it's not, it's not us and it's not our, you know, brilliance who have done it, but, you know, all that, all the glory goes to God in that. And, you know, we've, we've had plenty of chances to, to screw it all up, but God <laughs> <laughs> and his mercy has, has, you know, continued to, to, to bless it. And so we're just so thankful for that. Well, I, I just, I thank you on behalf of my kids and other kids and everybody who, who've been impacted by VeggieTales for all your years. And my girls are in here and they want to uh, say hey to you, if that's okay. Oh yeah, absolutely. They may have some, uh, they may have a question or two for you. Come here. This is Haley. And there's Hannah. And Natalie. Hey, Haley. Oh. Hey, Hannah. And who's, who's the third one? Oh, don't, don't get Bella. No. <laughs> She's wanting to show you the dog, but the dog doesn't know who Larry Boy is. <laughs> Haley, Hannah, and who else? This is Natalie. Natalie is 10. And Haley and Hannah are uh, seven, right? I think Bella wants to go on to bed. So, Mike was telling us about awesome. his favorite VeggieTales songs, and the ones he would list, uh, listed remind, made me think of us driving in the van, because, like, you're talking about the gated community, uh -huh, and, uh -huh. uh, 
and I, I was talking about cheeseburger song and stuff. So uh, tell them your favorite songs. Cheeseburger. Cheeseburger. Oh, you like cheeseburger? Oh, your dad does a mean cheeseburger song, that's for sure. <laughs> what about your what about yours, Hannah? What's your favorite? What's your favorite Veggie Tales song? Do you have one? Probably that one guy that he speaks like Spanish or whatever. Spanish? Oh, the dance of the cucumber. Yeah, yeah. In fact, I've got the poster. I don't know if you can see the poster in the background. That's that's a dance of the cucumber poster right back there. He's got yeah. he's got Larry Boy in the in the back. <laughs> yeah. Larry, Larry Boy and then the Larry okay. and the sombrero for uh Pepino Bailarin, Pepino Bailarin, Pepino Bailarin, Baila Baila ja. That's dance cucumber, it's dance the, cucumber, the, yeah. The only Spanish words <laughs> that I can say is si, no comprendo, and <laughs> and what? What about Ola? Oh, the most easiest Spanish word. What is the word? Vinos. Vinos? Yeah. Oh, okay. Natalie, you want to say, you want to tell them your favorite song? Come here. To be honest, I haven't, I don't really know. <laughs> That's well, okay. We, we won't put you on the spot there. Well, we watch uh, VeggieTales. We took a cross country trip a few years ago and their uh -huh. grandmother gave them like a whole bunch of edgy tales so that took us across the country we we watched the whole the whole thing oh, i love that and as a parent you know uh we, you probably and i know this with movies that my kids have watched i've heard more than i've seen just because it's going on right behind your head you hear it but you don't see it <laughs> oh yeah yeah i have to imagine what the visuals are on, my, on <laughs> things yeah that's right that's anything right. you want to ask him about larry boy or larry the cucumber um, was it really hard to be in like all of the, of the veggie tales, but you, but you wanted to do other stuff sometimes maybe? Oh, well, that's a great question. No, for, you know, so for many, many years, uh, veggie tales was all I did. So, you know, I would write shows and I do my voice and then I would direct episodes um, and so that was like, it was a full-time job and I loved it, you know, and it was hard. I mean, like any job, a lot of things were hard. Like we'd be trying to come up with the story and, you know, the ideas weren't working and we had to redo them and redo them until we got it right. And so, um, you know, so it would, coming up with the story for me was always the most challenging part. Uh, but when, but when we were able to get a story that worked, that was, then it became really exciting then to, you know, to go into production and, and, and do that. So for years, it was all I did. And, and now, um, you know, with, with the new VeggieTales series, I'm doing a little bit of writing and then voices, um, but it doesn't take nearly as much time. You know, it's interesting because, you know, like a, a half hour, a half hour, um, uh, you know, VeggieTales episode maybe takes, you know, a recording session lasts for about four hours. Um, and then you come back later um, and do what are called pickups if lines change or you need, you need to do some fixes. Um, so maybe six hours is all it takes to record a half an hour of, of, of VeggieTales episode, but it takes months and months to make, you know, so, so the, the voice, the, the time it takes to voice a show is very small in compared to the whole production time. So, um, so there's still a lot of time to do other things in between that. I mean, it's too late. I mean, I watched something that started in the, the 70s and is still going today. And I'm like, it's too late for them. That are <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're actually watching Little House on the Prairie right now. So, <laughs> oh, that's awesome! I was a huge Little House on the Prairie fan. Oh yeah. my goodness! Yeah, so my uh, my. Go ahead, go ahead. I was gonna say my sister-in-law sent out a meme. I just saw it this morning on um on uh, on Facebook, and it was a picture of Nelly from Little House on the Prairie, like the villain. And uh, the the meme was if. 2020 was a Little House on the Prairie character. <laughs> it would have been Nelly. <laughs> Leanne, my wife is here too. You want to say hello? Hi. <laughs> Hi there. How are you? Good. How are you? <laughs> I'm doing good. You have a beautiful family. Thank you. I think so. What would Larry say about the about the shutdown and all that, and and what's he been doing through all this? Oh my goodness. 
Well, you know, I, I've actually been thinking about Larry because, you know, when I go back to school, we have men, we'll, we'll have, uh, you know, all the students and professors will have to wear face masks. And so um, I'm thinking of a Larry the Cucumber face mask would be perfect, you know, just like a big smile in it too. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. so, <laughs> so, uh, so just uh, Larry will say, you know, wear your masks in public, folks. <laughs> yeah, very good. I mean, uh, 200, um, 2019 was like, Gucci AirPods and you know other stuff, and now it's like toilet paper, hand sanitizer, mask. You I don't know. buy what you want <laughs> anymore. You have to buy what you need. Paper. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Well, what a difference a year can make, right? But no, we're, you know, we're it just it, it makes us, you know, shows us how vulnerable we are and uh, how much we rely on God. And I think that's uh, it's an important lesson for all of us. Well, thank you so much, Mike. I think uh, I think I've uh, run you out of time here, but it's been right. great talking to you. Thanks for saying hey to the girls too, and and oh. uh, we love VeggieTales and we love all you've done through the years. We were saying it's like early uh, late '80s when they started, Leon. So it's uh, really it's amazing, you know how wow. long, yeah, how long yeah. it's been a while. Yeah. Just a little, just a little bit after Little House on the Prairie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Laura Ingalls and then Larry, right? <laughs> that's right. All right, you all. Well, God bless you. And doing this great talking with you again, and so so nice to meet you all. Thank you. I'll I'll, I'll do my Larry sign off. Always remember, God made you special, and He loves you very much. Bye. Say goodbye, <laughs> girls. Bye. Bye. Bye, guys. God bless. Thank you.